exhibit, the RB Some Lyrics exhibit, and I'm sitting talking in my studio somewhere. So here it is. And I'm talking in my studio. On paper, sketching things. Uh, <clears throat> I've been a working artist for 20 years. You can find me on all social medias. Come on in, brother. Come on in. Have a seat anywhere you want. No, why? Walking back. Well, 40 minutes away, and walking back. Okay. So. Just let me know. I'll drop you off when you put a drop your car. Um, but I'm on all social media. Delta Tango Mike is my uh, my uh, artist name. I also go by the Creative Genius, and I started that a long time ago. And because um, I thought I, I wanted to have a title, an art title, but I didn't. Didn't want it to be one thing that people would associate with one thing only, like a um, to the artist or a painter, fine artist. I didn't want it. I wanted it to be something that could could kind of come in in all kinds of ways. And um, so anyway, so that's me. You can find me anywhere. I've been a working artist for over 20 years. I've been uh, started my career as a tattoo artist. I started uh, drawing like everybody else as a little child, right? Just sketching and drawing. And then uh, when I got to be an adult, I realized that artists, there are artists who get paid for their work. The comics, the cartoons, all those things that we see uh, in pop culture, somebody had to sit down and draw it. Somebody, and somebody got paid for it. So I told myself that I wanted to be one of those artists. I want to get paid. And uh, so when I, the opportunity came up to learn how to do tattoos, I, I go ahead and I jumped in. I jumped in. My apprenticeship took a year and a half. And um, when I started, um, it was um, I, I had I, I, it was a lot of I took a long a year and a half of learning and not getting paid for any of that. But once I started getting paid and I saw that I was able to uh, make that a sustainable living, I quit my job and I went full time with this art thing. As time went on, I picked up graphic design. I started using computers to do art and design. Um, I started painting and uh, building websites. This is in the 90s, in the early days. And, uh, and so little by little, I started expanding my, my skills, my skill level. And I've always wanted to do a comic book, so I'll, that's still on my list. And um, I'm actually having a lot of more free time recently to, to start thinking about that again, about how my process and what I need to do next. But one thing that's been... Uh, uh, constant in my life is that I find ways to push my art into different areas so that I can get paid for it. So not only did I, do I get paid for doing tattoos, but I started getting paid doing graphic design. I started getting paid doing uh, building websites with people. I started getting paid doing murals. Um, and uh, I've done a couple of pages here and there, gotten paid for that. Of, um, through art installations, I get paid for that. So whatever which way I can find uh, to apply my art, I find ways to get paid for that, including logos and illustrations for apparel and things like that. And one thing that I realized is that when you're an artist and you find uh, that one thing you like to do, let's say comics, because a lot of us are doing comics. What's your name and what do you do? Uh, my name's Carl, and I've been a professional graphic designer for since 2005, but I'm trying to like, I've done mostly in-house corporate stuff. Okay. Right now I'm working at a company called Persian Rugs, where basically we take images and put them on rug, custom rugs. Nice. Uh, and, but I've, I've always wanted to do comics and animation. I recently got my MFA, I think I told you mentioned last year. Okay. And I was working at Ad Agency last year. Hmm. Um, recently I did an animated video for somebody, got paid for it, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm trying to like, do less corporate stuff and more creative stuff because mm -hmm. that's all I've ever done is like you know catalogs and flyers. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, that's and, graphic design, right? Yeah, yeah you know, game. I mean, I recently, I mean, I've, I've done a couple of comics for independent people, so I just did. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. No, 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 it's okay. I needed to hear this thing. I'll go ahead, tell us. I did. I just, I did Spirit Man a couple years ago. One for a friend of mine who's paid me. I guess mm -hmm. it's a small. Uh, recently, he hired an outside artist, but he didn't know how to do Photoshop, Illustrator, mm -hmm. so I did all like the coloring and the layout and stuff. So okay. I've been working, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not the level I like. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, that's, that's why I mean. you're here. Yeah. All right. Awesome.
Um, um, well, and, and that fits in because um, a lot of the things that I've done, I've done them because I know how to do them and I get paid for it, right? So uh, earlier I mentioned that I did, a, I did some graphic design for hospice once. You know, and it's, it's, not, it's not exciting. That's not exciting work. Um, um, what I am excited about is working on creative projects where um, I've worked in a few animation projects and I'm not an animator and I never went to school, never went to college. And, um, but my job was to do the artwork, just to get the artwork done. And then somebody else comes in and do the animation. Um, but I was still part of that project. And, uh, and so one thing that's remained constant in my career is that I find ways to where I can fit my artwork and I can fit myself and get paid. But on all those different um, 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 projects I worked on, they're very defined industries, right? So comic books is a very defined industry. Animation is a very defined industry, right? Graphic design and so on. And so what happens all, a lot of times is that artists get caught up into working for that particular industry for that particular pay rate. And then, and then uh, let's say another opportunity comes up that is a different industry, you're wondering, well, how much do they, they get paid? How much do artists doing that get paid? Great. And that's when the industry itself starts setting your pay rate for what you do mm -hmm. and then keeping you uh, at a very low rate. And that's why the title of this is called The Art Life Process, To Earn More Money and Be Happier. And uh, where the original title was, you're doing art wrong. <laughs> How are you doing it wrong? And so uh, let me go ahead and start my breakdown about how I see art and artists and how we need to start thinking about it and working on it in a way that um, allows us to make more money. Uh, that's some drawing I did on the Sketchable just because it showed up. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. I like a uh, sketchable. Yeah, that's not it. There we go. Come on, where's the colors? Oh, I didn't. I got rid of them. Oh, here they are. So, um, first things first. I'm an illustrator, right? I like drawing. I want to get paid to draw. That's it. I don't want to do nothing else. Um, um, I just want people to give me money and say, Dan, we need some artwork. We need uh, a drawing of some kind, right? That's what I want to do, nothing else. The cool thing about uh, being an illustrator is that um, your art can go on all types of projects. It can go into comics. It can go into animation. It can go into apparel, right? It can go to um, um, fine art, whatever. And I showed you earlier um, my artwork that I did for our beats and lyrics so that it started as a sketch and a drawing but at the end of the day it ended up as um, it's just, uh, it's gonna be prints is uh, it's uh, also uh, iPhone um, screen savers and an art installation you see so when you when you just start with the basic drawing you realize that it can go in lots of different directions we're doing art wrong when we fit into a particular industry and then that industry tells us how much we get paid. And, um, and when we do art wrong, here's what, what's wrong about that. So if you're, let's say you're a comic book artist, right? You do comics. Right, so when you start working in comics, what they say to you, well, if you're a uh, penciler, you fit into all these different things, right? Anchor, color, who, what's that person does the word balloons? I forgot. Letterer. Letterer, Letterer. Letterer. that's yeah, right. Yeah. Which I've never seen either. Right, <laughs> right, and then there's a, pay, uh, there's a rate for each one of these things, right? And, and this is per page. But if you're the kind of person who does all of these things and you get a different rate, right? But then all these artists, you see them at a, at a comic book conventions and they're doing live art, live drawings, ink or pencil or whatever, for 10 bucks. <laughs> and your booth might have cost you $250 that day. Mm -hmm. 
how many drawings do you need to do to make that 250? That's right. That's a lot of drawing. <laughs> right? That's, that's 25 uh, drawings. I like that. Right? To make 250. Jeez, of course, you know, you got merchandise or whatever, which is an extra cost because now printing, you know, and, and uh, um, uh, getting, bringing it in, getting shipped in, and flying in, to whatever, all the stuff that you got to do. So the problem with this is that uh, and here's well, here's a, a, a an extra part to that problem. I saw on Twitter. I follow a lot of artists on Twitter, and uh, one of them was complaining. This artist was complaining that this artist did a cover for a comic book. They did the cover, right? Let's pretend that's a cool cover. And uh, and they later saw that the comic book company pulled out a piece of that cover and started making merchandise. Wow with that artwork right and that that was not part of the contract and that artist didn't get paid for that if artists got paid for just doing a cover and I think it's part of it has to do with your contract part of it has to do how you deal with your business but the other part is you should be charging for all the things that you could do with this artwork this is what we're how we're doing it wrong the way, the way we do it to make more money and be happier is when you start talking to somebody, no matter who it is, it can be a book cover, it can be whatever you want it to be. I don't know what I'm making here, just something. It can, this artwork can go on, um, on book covers, it can go on posters, it can go on apparel, it can go on uh, merchandise. You know, nowadays we got Society6, all right brother that you can make um, 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 shower curtains. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know, that's crazy, right? <laughs> so imagine all these places where your artwork can go. Now you start thinking about, well, if I sell this piece of art and this drawing, of course, uh, like a, a commission for drawing Superman and Batman, that's not something that you can monetize yourself. Right. Um, um, but if it's a... Uh, but when it but but there's a level of how of where your art can go that you should get paid for, because DC can say, well, we love this Batman drawing so much that we're gonna start making posters out of it. Like, well, where's your where's your cut on that? You know, <laughs> you know, right? Because because uh, originally you drew it as a cover. So the because the artwork can go in different places, you have to start thinking about how the company can monetize that and what your rate should be. So then, when I start looking at how I get paid and the artwork that I do, I don't look at say, well, since the artwork I'm doing is only between the anchor and the color, so then that should be my rate. Like, nah, my artwork fits here for this comic book, but it also fits in all these different types of merchandise and things that I can do. <clears throat> and so because my artwork can fit in all this, especially since it's digital, especially since it's vector, <laughs> right, so so you can so you can scale it up and 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 not lose clarity. Now you gotta pay me for all these different plate ways that my artwork can be used after I give it to you. And so now my pay rate is higher. I worked in animation um, a couple months ago, and I asked for what I asked. I don't know what regular people <laughs> who draw for animation get paid, and that didn't bother. I know my rate. I know how much I need to get paid, and. I know how long it's going to take me to do this artwork, and this is what they got to pay me. And we went back and forth a few times, and they called me. They saw my artwork. They know my work. They know how professional I am because I've been doing it for a long time. So they called me. They asked to talk to me. They, they, uh, they want my artwork. They want my style. Well, now you got to pay. They tried to throw stuff like, um, um, uh, well, you know, that there's animation industry standards now in Georgia and, and movie standards, film because they're here now, a lot of film stuff. He's like, I don't care. You're gonna pay me the money that I said, that you agreed that you was gonna pay me. And so that's how you start making more money and working on the projects that you feel like because when you feel like you're getting paid um, properly, you feel happier to do it. You feel more excited to knock it out. When you, when you are working for very low money, you're doing it because you gotta get paid because you got a bill or something that you need a you need some income but then you're dragging man you're looking at that piece of hardware right you're looking at it like dang 
Yeah. They're not paying me enough for this. I need to knock this out and get it out of the way. But then you're going to start doing bad work. And now you're, it's just your work that's out there that people can see and be like, I don't know if you really drew that. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, years ago, uh, this uh, guy I met was working on a chess game with hip hop characters. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And he already had the artwork. And I just looked at it and he showed it to me. And I was like, what? This is terrible. <laughs> and he told me who the artist was. And I said, oh, you didn't pay him enough. <laughs> I could just tell. Because that dude is amazing. But that artwork that he had was not. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you just didn't pay him enough. You didn't pay him his real price. If you <coughs> paid him his real price, he would have gone all out. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's the key? Number one, getting paid what you're supposed to get paid that makes you want to be motivated to work on this project. And if you're not motivated, if the project doesn't motivate you, like it's not creative enough, you're already, yes sir. I'm sorry, I just had a question. Yes, yeah, so you had a question. What about like, if you agree on a pay rate that's decent, but then they don't pay you, they pay you half of them, they, they, you have to fight for them to pay the other half, you know. That's the business. Okay. That's just the business. Uh, I got lots of gigs like that where they, I, they disappeared. And uh, and I never then I never turned in the artwork that we were talking about was getting approved and I was working on it, but at the end of the day, uh, I finished. They're nowhere to be found. They're not answering emails. They're not answering phone calls. And all I got out of it was the fifty percent deposit in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Well, then that's the business. You know, you you take a hit. Yeah. Uh, it's important that if you're a freelancer and you're doing that, you need to have several gigs at the same time. See, that's the thing. I never really freelance. I like I've always worked like for just nine to five gigs. I just mm -hmm. started to freelance for a son. Right. So I didn't know that. So that yeah. kind of shocked me. Well, okay. So, so we're going to talk more about that because um, in the beginning, what I would do is they tell me what they want. I say, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to draw it. And then, I, and then I, I didn't pick up any money. I just went off and drew it, came back, mm -hmm. and then now they want to talk me down for my price. Cause I already did the work mm. and I didn't get any money up front so they have nothing to lose to when they walk away whereas I sat down and worked on this thing <laughs> yeah right 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 so that's when you learn by your mistakes right so now I'm not making that mistake again okay now it's 50 percent deposit okay and it depends on the on, on the project and the work that we're doing because I've been working on this mobile game for a client of mine and um, uh, 50 percent would have been in the thousands so so we had to break it up into smaller chunks so it was five different payments you know so um, um but even if you walked away and something didn't work out um i would at least have that first initial payment that was enough for me to get started and get going and then we stack stagger the payments to fit the amount of work that's happening so as soon as i reach a certain level with the artwork i need another payment as soon as I reach a certain level with that artwork, I need another payment. So that now we're in the last leg where now I just need to finish the rest of the artwork that's due and I get the last payment. Uh, the day comes when I, 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 the, um, the person, the client is disappears. Well, at least you got paid enough to for the work that you did. Well, she emailed me this week and said she's going to pay me the rest. It was like, like, I thought it was going to be like more a steady gig. Mm -hmm. And it didn't say so I'm taking a warehouse gig and then find and find an art gig like last week. Mm -hmm. a nine to five art gig. Right. But it was just like it's like I needed to get like a job job right. really quick. Yep. And that happens. And but see that's also like some of the, the beginnings of your freelance career where you because you don't have constant steady stream of clients, yes you have to work a, a, at a job somewhere. I worked at USA today. The first year I was a tattoo artist. When I opened my own shop, I had enough money to open the shop, get everything going, but because there was not a steady stream of people walking in to get tattoos, I got a job at night working at USA Today. Yeah, I got a you job know. early morning. Uh, right. NCR. Like okay. IT tech. Right. So, so the point is that in yeah. the beginning, before you build that momentum of clients and portfolio, right. you, you, there may be a time when you have to take a job. Gonna have so to do Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, it's, and that's okay to do that, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Is uh, you just want to um, um, make sure that you handle your art business correctly, so that there, you don't have too many times where a client will not pay you any money or haggle you once you've already started to do the work. Right. You need to get paid. That's, that's what happened. You need to get paid fifty percent. That's how I go. Yeah. You need to get paid. So sorry. No, it's good. It's good.
No, no. <laughs> I know, I know, like, cause I have experience with some of those things because I freelance while I'm you know, working a corporate job because I freelance on the side. And I don't want to do that because that seems like it's a good way to go. Yeah, sometimes we, if you got the time to do that, mm -hmm. things that um, what I found that you know because it depends on what kind of clients you deal with. You know, depending on the clients, how you kind of deal with them as far as how you negotiate. Right. But um, like usually if it's a small client individual. You usually just kind of be like, you know, give me 50% down. It's not refundable. You know, think a way. You got to think like a business. Think right. Ways to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So if they decide, you know what, I don't want this. Well, you dropped the deposit. I already told you it was not refundable. Be upfront as much as you can about your services so okay. they can't say, well, I don't want to do it anymore. I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. and I have my money back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you just say, you keep it simple. Not refundable. Deposit. And the rest will be once if work completed. Once the money is paid, you will receive final work. They won't, don't give them the final value. If you want to be safe when you give right. them submissions, low resolution, watermarks. Because mm. I've, I've done logos yeah. people and, and like, oh yeah, we'll pay you. Now they gave them the final artwork and they, no. no. Yeah. And right. so, and I'm, I'm learning from my mistakes here. I am. You know? But it's yeah. like, even with this lady, like, she would, I'm sorry, did you? No, I was Go ahead. No. No, go ahead. I don't you finish want telling finish. No, finish it's, it's just like, like I kind of like trust her because I was, I've met her. I interned for another company to do animation because I never did animation. And so she was, the lady I interned with said, I got a friend who wants to do some work. And so I shouldn't have trusted it just mm -hmm. because it's a friend of a friend. Right. I got advice for you about that. It's always those that get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you expect it from someone you don't know. You don't expect it from someone you do know. Right. So when it comes to business, sometimes you got to let the personal mm -hmm. stay personal and just be professional, mm -hmm. no matter who they are. No matter who you're talking to, huh? Because you will get burned. I've been there. I've done the same thing. And you feel like, wow, how did that happen? Why well, wasn't think? Because you looked at it from a personal like This person was nice. Got along. They did mm -hmm. stuff with me before. They never did it before. So you trust them. And then you find yourself, oh, I'm done. I there you go. You got it. Go ahead. I would say uh, I had two situations like that. This one person recently who asked me to do uh, like a monica and I'm going to charge $50 for it. So they uh, paid me $50 up front and stuff, and I didn't work for them. They didn't like it. They didn't want money back. So I gave $25 back for the whole time. They said, well, why not get $50 back? I said, because it's all $50. Because that was supposed to be up front. So I told you this when we first met up. So I'm going to flash your internet and stuff like that. I said, okay. Matter, I got my pay. This is yours now. I can do what I can to fix this mm -hmm. so you can have it. So, that, but they wouldn't hear it, they wouldn't get all their money back or something like that. So, and they, they end up not getting it when they only get 25 bucks back from it. And then I had a situation with my own cousin. Wow. Who <laughs> had a logo design. They all got it. And I've been working with her for a while to do this thing. And I told her, okay, you gotta pay this amount up front. I was only working with her, so like I said, normally, I so I know people who charge the for like almost a thousand. Plus, for most of the mm -hmm. work, so then now I'm gonna charge 300, which is already undercutting myself as is. And so, so, you know, you need to pay me at least 150 up front, right. stuff like that. And once I get to a certain phase, which is pretty much all, uh, I said, once I get to like the rough stage stuff, that's not on front of me. So it's locked down, period. Now, here for everybody else, like, it's not on front of up front in general, mm -hmm. it's a plus. But that me, I still contact my cousin, is that right? Yeah. 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 So, like, this is my cousin. Her brother actually mm -hmm. got with cancer or something, so it was very personal and stuff like that. It got to the point now that I got to and said, look, you got paid me for blah, 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 and she still got paid me. So I said, look, you have to go that way. Yep. You have to take your L's with the mm -hmm. greatest loss. So, yep. Yeah. I did that one because I want to. Go ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I, gotta, I don't want to take much of a No, it's good. It's okay. We're here to talk. That's why we're here like this. Yeah, the briefs, I find that that's very helpful because it weeds out people. Because when you have a creative brief presented, kills all that, hey, I got this idea, I want to do this, this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, okay, here's a creative brief. Put in the creative brief, what's your budget? You know what you're working with. When they put their budget, they're going to think about what they're working with. Mm -hmm. and they're going to be conscious of things, because sometimes the client just doesn't know. They don't, all they know is, I want to design. I don't know about the hours it takes, I don't know about the services, I don't even, I just know I like your work, and, you, and sometimes they may not even like your work, they just know you can do something that they need. So you have to, so you have to, that creative brief kind of leads that out where it says, hey, this is what I want, 
and then they're asking questions like you put in what examples that you like, what are you looking for, colors. You don't have to do all that back and forth with them because they don't really know how even how long it takes half the time. Yeah, and then, then mm. they're thinking about what they're actually wanting, and then you can see who's serious because anybody that's serious and professional, if they want that design, they're gonna fill out that brief. But the ones who don't, they they want that's how you always. I need to talk to you after this. Mm -hmm. Show me an example of brief then. Yeah. Well, not only that, um, what do you call it? That's called a, a, a business process. Okay. That's what that's called. You know, and uh, it's good that you can connect later, but you need to work with other professionals first. Yeah. Before you are out there doing your own freelancing, you need to work with other freelancers, or you need to go to freelance events where they where you have other freelancers and start collaborating and working with somebody who already knows how to negotiate, who already knows how to do proposals, who already knows how to do contracts. So that way you start learning and picking up those things from them, so then you start applying it for yourself. You could learn, you could take your time to learn all these things, but the hardest part is that we learn as we go and we take hits on that. My creative process, uh, my, my process with my clients always starts with, uh, what's your budget or uh, that sounds like a great idea and that's going to be $1,500. So that they already know how much they need to come up with. And, uh, and, and so we always have to have that, that uh, price talk, price, and, uh, and what's the project. And I have a process, uh, I have a pricing for most of my projects that I work in <coughs> because I already know what I want to do. Um, uh, the project and then how much time it's going to take. That's it. Um, um, and so when I when I make sure I, I check when I have these three things uh, already lined up, um, uh, and I do that on the very first conversation that I have with somebody. Okay. When do you need it? Uh, what's your budget? I don't know. How much do you usually mm -hmm. pay, for, pay uh, charge for that? Fifteen hundred bucks. Um, um, and uh, and so then they can right away say, Oh, you're too expensive. I can't do it. I had this phone call one time. <laughs> <clears throat> And this one I was charging a, a few hundred dollars for logo. And a lawyer called me. She said, yeah, we're calling from the attorney such and such. We want to talk to you about doing a logo. I was like, great. Um, uh, and then I told her how much I charged. She got mad and hung up. Ooh. An attorney. Yeah. I'm like, but you charge hundreds of dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but it's okay to get those conversations out the way and get that information out the way so that then you know whether or not you have a client. If they stick around and keep talking to you, well then they're able to afford it and they're gonna go ahead and have it. It's gonna be a gig. But if they start having problems like, well that's too much, can you do it for this? Or, well I talked to so-and-so and they said they would do it for that. I'm like, well then what you need to talk to me for? Go talk to that other person, right? Get, go get, yeah, go get it somewhere else. If they got it, that's great. I don't know that artist and I can't tell you if it's gonna be good or bad work. But if that sounds good to you, go do that. The point is that you want to go ahead and get that information out the way so that you know or whether or not they're a client. Now, once you know that they're a client, you have to go ahead and get your deposit. And that's the process. You know, so once you agree to the price, now it's about deposits. And as you work on that, as you set up a deposit, um, uh, you have steps in the project where then payments come into play. And as you keep working on the project, then there's the, the final balance when you're finished. Um, what I like to do is, I don't send, I, I do screenshots. Yes. When I'm, I, I, right there as I got Photoshop and Design, whatever open, I do a screenshot of that, say here you go, check it out. I may even throw their logo on a t-shirt model and send it off to them, there you go. You can see what your logo looks like. You don't have the file. You got a picture of a person with a <laughs> shirt on and it has a logo on it. What do you think? You like it? It looks good. Um, uh, so then they can say yes. I say cool. And as soon as you hit the balance online, hit me with the balance, I'll send you your files. And I have them all put together in one folder, PNGs, PSDs, EPS, AI, whatever, PDF, all in one folder. I zip that folder and then when they pay me, I go ahead and send them an email with a Dropbox link, done. But that takes time to figure those things out. Whereas the first time I did a logo, the guy told me what he wanted. I said, great. I went and drew it, brought it back, and then he didn't want to pay me. And it was only 50 bucks. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. 20 years ago, but still, <laughs> like, dang, you gonna jack me for fifty dollars and I did the drawing? All right, well then that's the business. I gotta understand how to conduct my business so that I get I get what's fair and uh, and clients. Uh, I keep working with more and more clients. Hello, how you doing? You here for the Artist King meetup? Yeah. Yeah, come on in. There's some. Uh, there might be a couple extra chairs over there. Bring bring it in here. Now, <clears throat> when you start any project, and this is why we're here about you know making more money, is that when you get the pay rate that you deserve, you're you're very motivated to do the job, and that means that person that you're working with is funded. If they're funded. That makes you more motivated to work on it. And if it's a very clean, creative project, then you're happy. That's how you make more money and be happier. But you got to, um, you got to define what kind of projects you want to work with. And like I explained to you earlier, um, my Behance is all illustrations, only illustrations. So that way, the clients that come to me will, do, will want the work that I like doing, which is illustrations. I don't post on my Behance or my portfolio, the graphic design that I've done, websites that are done. I don't want to do those anymore. I did them for the money. I did them because I wanted me to get paid. But now I can really, I really just want to focus on illustration only. So I'm not talking about those things. I'm not sharing those things. The stickers that I hand out, I have my website where it's all illustration work. It's going to have, the next set of stickers has uh, my Behance link. I'm going to give you some stickers um, so that I only get the illustration work. That's all I want. And so that to me, that's creative. That's in the, uh, the stuff that I want to do. So now my only focus is finding the kind of people who will pay for that. And I'm going to talk about my Behance a little bit more. Um, um, it's, uh, it's called uh, Proof of Concept. Um, um, but uh, so, so now my focus is who do I want to work with? Who's going to pay me for this that has money? So it's always cool when you meet people on the street. They're like, oh, you're an artist? Oh, great, because I have this idea. When I tell them I do tattoos, they're like, oh, yeah, I want to have this back piece and this and that and the other. I'm like, great, that's 150 bucks an hour. And this look, looks like it's going to be 20 hours. <laughs> oh, well, ah, well, what about if something like this? You know, they change their mind now, once you start talking money, right? I don't want those customers. I don't want to talk. I don't want to have to go back and forth about the money. I want them to see my artwork and be like, dang, Dan, your art is amazing. Here's a bag of money. <laughs> when can you have this done? You know what I mean? That's what I want. And so my focus now is like, where who are the people who can pay me for this? I've done a lot of gigs for McDonald's, uh, Coca-Cola. They pay. They got money for that. I've done um, the murals that I worked on. I do them for uh, private companies. They're indoor murals. There are installations that live in their office from forever now until they paint over it. Um, um, I was talking to this guy one time. And, um, and that's how I know he was rich. Um, uh, of course, he owns a company, so I figured he had some money. <laughs> but, but when he told me that he wanted four murals, um, I, gave them, I gave him the price. And his response was, all right, let me get you the check. He didn't say, hey, that's too much. He didn't say, well, what if we make him, what, what about just two murals instead of four? He didn't say all that. He just said, okay, let me get you the check. Like, what? <laughs> that's who the clients that I want. You know, so I'm not out there advertising on Facebook like, hey, who needs art today? I don't care about none of those people who are my friends and my, some of y'all may be my friends on Facebook. It's like, I'm not selling to, to y'all. I'm not selling to everybody. No, I want to sell to people who have money, who have a budget, and say, yes, $3,000 is nothing. Here you go. Because we want your work. We want you to do the artwork. So that client, I quoted him like $4,000 for the four, logo, four, uh, four murals. And, um, and so he said, okay. And then while I was working on one mural, there was a change in color. So I had to charge him more for that. So he said, okay. Then when I started doing that, um, that, that the, the new color, he changed his mind on the font. And uh, so I had to charge him extra again. And he said, okay, because they know what they want and they want me to do it. And then uh, at the end of the day, and, uh, in two weeks, I did four murals and I charged him $7,000. That's a good vacation. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it really comes down to finding the, the, the client that has, that has the money to pay you the rate that's going to keep you happy working on the project. It's going to be tough, though, when you know you got rent to pay, 
You know, you have bills and things that are coming up or whatever, and you're like, you're just taking a gig in any job. You can still do that. That's just not going to give you more money or make it happen. Just a note if you guys want it. It's called Local 479 in the film industry, and they're always looking for people in the art department. Local 479? Yeah. Okay. For a film or TV or something? Like, I don't know if you saw Creed, but like, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm a photographer and the, the, the posters when they had the press conference that were hanging over their heads. Mm -hmm. The photos of the art department. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. It's definitely a way to take Here, have a couple <laughs> stickers. Thanks. Um, um, and uh, here, a couple for you too. Um, and uh, for you. I had some artwork that um that I did and um uh, and we licensed it to this company who who then uh sells it for film TV posters yeah. and prints and so on. Yeah. And I forget what they're called. I'll look it up. But yeah, because the film TV is here, there's all kinds of opportunities. My brother-in-law, he licensed for one uh TV show, one of his paintings for that episode and got paid for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's so 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 that goes back to the original uh, conversation is uh, is that you have to think about where your art is going to be and what's that worth you know so let's pretend for a second that you know um, somebody telling you about oh this they're gonna do a children's book and they want a character drawn up but they only got fifty dollars will you do it fifty dollars and you say sure right done ten years from now it's Disney World <laughs> you know they're multi-billionaires yeah. but they only pay you fifty bucks Right, so you gonna feel bad. You gonna feel terrible. You gonna be mad. You ain't never gonna want to see no Disney World ever. No commercials. No towels. No nothing. And you only got fifty dollars. So you gotta think about where is this artwork going. When you're asked for a logo, uh, an illustration of some kind, like, well, where is all this logo gonna go on? And it's gonna go on the side of trucks because UPS delivers all over the world. It's going on trucks all over the world. Well, then you need to get paid for that. You need to get paid at a level that is in relation to how this logo is going to be used. So when uh, designers work for um, Instagram and they redid the Instagram, that's a hundred thousand dollar job right there. Because that's a billion dollar company. And that hundred thousand dollars should be nothing. Right? So, but the industry will tell you, listen, 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 you're a comic book artist, you should get paid ten dollars a sketch, right? $50 if it's a background on it. Like, what? <laughs> How many drawings do I need to do to pay my bills? Which goes into the next part. Well, what's your life costing you? You need to know what's your, what your life costs. What's your budget? What is your rent, your food, insurance, car, gas, all, all those things, right? And then you add that up, it's like, dang, we're gonna throw out a number, that's a low number. $3,000 a month, that's how much money I need a month. Right? And if they're gonna work on a gig that's gonna take you a month, you're not gonna accept 200 bucks. Right. Because like, wait a minute, what am I gonna do to pay my bills that whole month if I'm only gonna work on this one gig for 200 bucks? Yeah. Right, nah. So, so you gotta start thinking about, well, if I charge um, um, a comic book page 100 bucks for, um, let's say you're doing the easy part, the, the inking, right? Because right? the thumbnails and the color and pencil is the hardest part trying to figure out, I, I don't, it's making it up, I don't know, the um, uh, hardest part of the process because you got to get the, the right shot, the right angles, and uh, foreshortening, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, um, <clears throat> so if it takes you 100, if they're paying you uh, 50 bucks a page, you know, and it's a 30 uh, page book, that's only 1500 bucks, and you still have, you still need half the money for the rest of your bills. Yeah. So that means you need to knock that stuff out in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a nine to five, job you know it's paying you ten dollars an hour you're like well i need to go ahead and uh, take a break from this nine to five job to pay me ten bucks an hour to knock out these pages that pay me 50 bucks per page so you gotta start now weighing like well how am i gonna earn the things that, to the money that i need to live my life all right so here's some of the things about what i think that we need to do number one is have the right mindset 
you know, we need the mindset that says that you're worth it, you have value. Your art has value. And it has value relative to the industry that you're in, but also relative to who you're talking to, right? Because um, you may have a, your character that you're doing the webtoons and stuff, the webcomic, and uh, be like, look, I'm doing an art show. I would like 10 artists to, to do my character and their style and do a show. You know, like, well, what are you paying? Well, I ain't got no money, but it was a good idea. All right, well, give me 10 bucks for the art materials and I'll do it, right? That's cool, because you're cool, dude. But when we sell it, it's going to be $500 and I got to get my cut, all right? But if we're talking to maybe the owner of Sam Flags, right? They got stores in other states. Um, um, can you do me a, a drawing of uh, some character, blah, blah, blah? Like, yeah, that's $5,000. Mm. You know what I mean? Who are you talking to? Yeah. Right? So, so one thing is the industry, but then the other thing is who you're talking to. You know, and just because um, Marvel and DC are the big timers, that doesn't mean they pay good money. There's a lot of stories out there in the comic book world. You know, so so you got to figure out what's your value and 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 have that mindset that I got to work for this amount of money or I'm not doing it. I can't do it. And if that means you stay stay longer at the job, that means you take more time to build other parts of your business so that you can earn have that value to other people's eyes, then that's what you're gonna have to do. Which brings us into uh, pricing. You have to understand the pricing. Pricing of where you are. Sometimes I'll do a gig for very low money just for the opportunity to work with somebody. You know, just like this Art Beats and Lyrics uh, um, exhibit. I'm just doing it just so I can be in the show. And I keep talking about the show and I can get into the show for free and hang out and party with the rest of them. Like, cool, that's good enough for me for now. But I'm also, because I, I took a lot of time to produce this artwork, I'm going to use it for prints. I'm going to use that artwork for stickers. I'm going to use that artwork for all types of things. So I'm not losing anything, right? So um, so some, so that will be one example where I'm not actually charging for the use of the artwork, but I'm going to use the artwork in all kinds of ways. So the pricing, uh, but if the, they wanted exclusivity, if they wanted to only be used at this show, well, then now they have to pay for that. And there has to be a rate. I don't know what um, licensing uh, costs would be, but I know Jack Daniels is their sponsor. I know somebody's rich is paying for this <laughs> event. So it's going to have to be a couple thousand dollars, minimum. Why not? Right? So think about what your pricing is. Another thing is education. You know, we're here today. We're talking about it. I have meetups every month. Uh, the next one is not going to be until uh, November because uh, I'm going to be in L.A. in October. But one of the things is that uh, in the beginning when you start off, we, we have um, failures in the way we conduct business and lose money. And so my goal with Artist King and these meetups is that we share enough information that then you're able to use in your career so that you can um, do, make better decisions dealing with clients. And so that's where education comes into play. Um, I know a lot of artists who go to SCAD and art schools do not get the business talk. No. Right, no. here we go. So y'all prove yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> and so then that's why, so then the best way to get the education is number one, going to places, here comes a big timer, um, uh, Alyssa. But another way is, is, is just to go to meetups like this and even hers, uh, she has my animation life. And, and, but also working with other artists or creatives who are in the business. And then, and so I have a few mentors and I'll work with them for free. Like they don't have to pay me, but I need to listen to all the conversations that they have. I need to be in on the conversations when they have, um, when they're negotiating. I need to know how much they're charging. I need to know a whole lot of things about their business because that's why I'm doing it for free. That's why I'm willing to go ahead and knock out a few projects with them just so that I can collaborate, just so that I can learn the business because they're further ahead in their career. They're already getting paid. So the guy who's curating the RBs and lyrics, his name is W, and he's been a working artist since the 90s. And he's way further ahead in my, his career than I am. And he has a sponsor, Jack Daniels, who's multi-billions, whatever, right? I have sponsors, but not Jack Daniels sponsors. So I, he is my mentor. I listen to everything he says. I hang out with him as much as I can. And whenever he asks me to do something, I do it. 
just so that I can have more time with him and let him feed me information. Let him tell me stuff. Let him tell me stuff. I need to hear it and I write it down. And the next thing I know, I do is go out there and do it and get it done so that I can be like him and earn and have my career further ahead just like he has. So that's where the education comes into play. Um, uh, the portfolio is the other thing. And that's where I was talking about be handsome. So earlier I showed um, um, uh, Shamari my portfolio and uh, on Behance and how I use it. And so the way I use it is, um, uh, it's free. Everybody, anybody can get a Behance portfolio. Just go to Behance.net, log in, it's free. And, uh, and, and you have the option of updating things and adding um, um, uh, blog posts, kind of like a blog post. So these are all postings. And, uh, and so they can be very simple and plain like this one. So here's an here's a, uh, and so the way I use my Behance is as a portfolio, but you also have to tell the story. It's about storytelling. What is it going on here with your art? What are you doing? Not only is it storytelling, but you're also doing uh, case studies and proof of concept. Like where's the art gonna go? A lot of artists I talk to and they draw and they have unfinished work, and I'm like, well, where's this art gonna be? Where have you seen unfinished work? on the side of the bus before, right? A lot of sketches, a lot of pencil drawings. Like, that's great, but how, how does that try, where do you see cartoons doing that? So, so, so by you sh having a case study and proof of concept about your artwork, you're showing it where does it lead to, where does it go? So in this example is uh, I did um, a seven day challenge where I draw on a different tablet every day, just cause I could. Just cause I have a bunch of different tablets and. And I get asked the question all the time, should I get an iPad, should I get a Surface? Like, yeah, if you got the money, get what you want. Um, um, but if you don't, then there's alternatives to buying what's, uh, what's within budget. So here's an iPad Air, I was drawing on it. I did live on YouTube, and then I grabbed the video, put it in the Behance, and then I explained why I was doing this, what I did, um, what technology I used, and why. Right, so now I'm explaining stuff. I'm kind of telling the story about this, and I show the drawings that came out of this uh, process in the final. Right, so you click on it, you get to see it's digital. It's uh, you can actually, um, and I didn't do this part where I can export to Illustrator, and that's a full vector artwork. All right, that's done. So that was a short little one, right? That was simple. That's to the point. Like, hey, just because I knew I needed to put it up there. Here's how deep you can get. Whatever project you're working on, there's a purpose for it. There's something gonna, this is gonna end up somewhere. <clears throat> and so, the beginning of this post, all I did was just post the drawing so you can see it right away. Of course, it gives you options about, uh, to put in uh, the kind of uh, um, software you're using. And uh, twice since I put my artwork on Behance, has Adobe uh, light my work and put it on the app. So it's on the Adobe Draw app. Um, uh, so trying to get them to pay attention to this one anyway so here's the whole artwork all the pull, the piece put together so now I'm starting to tell the story hey you know there was there's a show exhibit uh, they did a call for art so I submitted and I wanted to show them my style and, and see what they thought so this was my submission to this to, to the call for art and they liked they liked it of course because the guy is my mentor and I've known him 15 years but I still had to show him what I'm gonna do right he still has to see it so I got the call back later. It's like, cool, Dan, you're in. And then he sent me this uh, template and said, all the artwork has to fit in here. So I'm telling the story. I'm telling you the story that I actually telling in here, right? This is how deep you can get with, with uh, your post. So then I had the template. I started to do the sketches. This is the idea that I was going to go with. This is the things that I wanted to represent. I also, um, so then I, I, I'm, I'm also talking about what software I'm going to use on the iPad Pro because I want to be able to um, export, did do draw digital, export and, and scale up without losing quality. So that's a vector. So then um, I have videos of my process for each individual piece. So there it goes. And it's halfway there because uh, we were looking at it earlier. And this is also happens to be one of the pieces that I did in downtown uh, as a mural. So, uh, so I'm kind of tying my work from all over together. So there it goes, and it, and it goes all the way to the end, right? Till, till, it, till, 
If somebody wants to sit here and watch it all, they see the whole thing. Done. And I did that for each and every character that's in that piece. There's a video for all of them. Each and every one. Then I'm still, so I'm still telling the story. So then what I did was I started placing all the individual characters into the template I was given and adjusting, making adjustments. So the, each piece that goes in, I do another adjustment, 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 until it starts to really spill over the design, which is fine, as long as it looks right when it's all finished and complete. Now, now it's ready for the exhibit. Now that it's ready for the exhibit, here's a little quick uh, detailed look. You can zoom in, take a look what's going on. But, and I even provided some iPhone wallpapers in case somebody likes my work so much that they can just grab it from here. And now, here's the, the final design uh, for the exhibit. Mm -hmm. It's been printed on, on fabric. It's been wrapped around a, a light box. And so it's lit from the inside. And now you see where the artwork ends up. So that's uh, now showing you what good is this piece of drawing that you're showing me? It's good for this. There's something on it. It goes on a shirt. You know, it, whatever. It goes on a hat. And so now I have photos of the real thing. And there's a lot of mock-up websites that you can buy. Uh, mock-up uh, layouts so you can put in the design. Right? So it doesn't have to go all the way to finish physical world like mine. But here it is. And now whoever's looking at my work be like, dang. That's what I feel like, dang. <laughs> and then there's a logo for the, the uh, exhibit. There's the name of the curator of the exhibit. So when there's a, a Google search for RBS and lyrics, my stuff may come up, right? And then here's a final uh, shot of one of those drawings that I turned into a sticker. I'll have those next week. And that's that. It's a long story. Yeah. And I t not only do you have to take the time to create the artwork and work on your craft, you have to document it. You have to take pictures constantly, nonstop. Take, videotape what you're doing. Do a Facebook Live. Do a uh, YouTube Live. Doesn't matter. Whatever. You need to document this process. Because when you're talking to clients and, and, uh, um, and, and they, they start uh, telling you what they, what, you, what they want and you start telling them how much it's going to cost, they're like, but you did a drawing right there. It took you 10 minutes. They're like, yeah, but the concept you're telling me, I need to think about it for a week. <coughs> I can do like 20 sketches. They don't know all these things. But you're telling the story about the process, about your, your, your uh, creativity and inspiration and all it takes. Now they're like, oh yeah, 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 you're right. And at the beginning of this thing, I said it took me 30 hours. So if I worked at, um, at a fast food joint for $10 an hour, where did it go? Somewhere around here it says 30 hours. Um, um, so let's say 10 bucks an hour times 30, that's $3,000, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but my pay rate, because of the lifestyle I live and the bills and the budget and stuff that I mentioned earlier, my pay rate is between $75 an hour to $150 an hour. So let's just go at $100 an hour times 30. Oh no, that's, that's three, $30,000. That's all, that, my math is mixing me up, all the zeros, right? I don't care, give me a bag of money. <laughs> right so and, and, and so they're like well why so much Dan because of all of this so that you can end up with this you want that right there I can do that for you but it's going to take a lot of work as long as you, and so and if I've identified my client if I identify the kind of people who can pay that rate and I'm going hard at them saying look at my work look at my work look at my work I, I, I see I, you have an opening right now that's me now I can get the rate that I want to do the work that I love and now I'm making more money and I'm happy does that make sense yeah yeah <coughs> did I bring it back around did I leave something out <laughs> so I use Behance as a portfolio um, you can have a, your own website. I have a website, uh, I have several websites actually. One of my websites is my DTM Delta Tango Mike website, deltatangomike.com, right? Okay. So, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. And, uh, and so on my Delta Tango Mike website, it has everything, um, um, everything that I do. So what I, what I, the stuff that I do, number one is the art business. So I, I do talks. 
and I talk to, I do, I go wherever I can to talk about the art business. But, where is it? That's what I meant to see here in my bio. I do acting. So I was in uh, The Walking Dead because there's a lot of uh, uh, film and TV now, right? So there's always calls for art. I happen to be uh, mean looking Mexican, so that was calling me up, right? So this is on the set of The Walking Dead. Um, and, uh, and I have the bat they gave me to to uh, look mean on. Um, I've been in a few things and so on. So that's what this website's about. Just mostly about everything that I do. And my CV, and I mentioned my CV before. So um, the CV is kind of like a resume with your bragging rights, with the things that you've been doing that has pictures of your work, some, some uh, proof of concept, some case studies, okay. right? Case studies, like what you worked on, why? How did you get to this finished brochure or catalog? I worked on this, um, 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 what do you call those, annual reports. And it was beautiful. It was like 16 pages and it was beautiful. Yeah. And then it got through the project manager and it went through the client and came back and it was ugly and terrible. Yeah. So on a case study, I wouldn't use what I actually finished. I would have used what I actually did and why I did it that way. Okay. Right? So, so all of those things count. And all of those, you can put them on Behance. So my bragging rights are, are murals and installations, art shows and exhibits, uh, what I've done, where I've been, panel discussions, which I need to update. I was just at uh, Momocon earlier, Atlanta, comic something. Like comic convention. Is that, yeah, that's right. Uh, I was at Dragon Con uh, last week, so all that needs to go on in there. Okay. Um, and let's see what's the last thing. Oh, um, and so I draw at, at events. And so I did TEDx Peachtree a couple years ago where I was at the, at, at the conference and all day long they had speakers and I was drawing on canvas, right? So this, this doing this got me a gig with uh, Coca-Cola and McDonald's so that they come, call me every now and then, say, hey, Dan, we need you to come in and do some drawings for us. I'm like, cool. And uh, they pay me between 50 to 100 bucks an hour. Yeah. One time I did this for um, Arby's. And uh, this lady called me. She says, "Hey, Dan, we need we need you. Uh, would you be available?" I was like, "Yeah." And she said, "How much you charge per hour?" And I was like, mm. "And I said 75." And she said, "Okay, can you do this for 10 hours in one day? You want to get paid 750 in one day?" That's basically what she's asking. Like, yeah. How do you get confident enough to do that? Because I interviewed for Arby's for a senior design position, mm -hmm. and they they looked at my resume and said you're qualified, but then. Because I wasn't confident, they kind of like, why are you not confident? Mm -hmm. And so it, I didn't get the job because I was. That's what they said to you. Yeah, that's okay. what the recruiter said to me. Oh, okay. And so, uh, which I'm glad you said it because I, I knew why. Mm -hmm. You know, and <clears throat> I think that's happened. Like I, I interviewed for a job at the corporate office for Home Depot. I went through four rounds of interviews, and I still didn't get the job. So I think part of my confidence. How do you get the confidence mm -hmm. to like? Because even leave, even leave the design thing, like just to get to like the next level, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That takes practice. Number one, I happen to be an extrovert, so I like to talk and brag. Right. You know, Muhammad Ali is one of my uh, heroes. Like, do a talk and smack somebody after that. Right. <laughs> so you got to be that kind of person, and if you're not, then you have to. Um, what some people do is they um, they they look at it as an acting gig. You're about to go on stage. Okay. You're not yourself. You're this character, and this character talks and walks this particular way. Okay. You know, and that's it. And you are that character. So in real life, you know, um, um, you you are a a, 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 um, a low talking person. You know, kind of cool and relaxed. But when it comes time to you be the designer, superstar designer, the superstar illustrator, you, know, you got to put on that leather jacket and the spiky shoes. You know, and color your hair, and put on some dead president's makeup on, and now you are that superstar. Yeah. And you got to carry yourself that way. Okay. And that's my number one advice. You know, is just think of it as acting. But as, as time goes on, you got to practice that acting. You need to practice that acting on your own, and you got to. And um, when it comes to job interviews, you got to act like you don't need the job. You don't want the job. Because. Now you can be relaxed, it's like, well, if they call me, they call me. If they don't, they don't. I'm gonna have a conversation with you. Just talk about it. Yeah, I like to do design. 
I yeah, I can do that stuff right there. It's cool, cool, cool. That's nice. And then I think that because when I cause the first three rounds at Home Depot, I act like I didn't need it. And then the last one where I had to meet their actual staff was a group of like they had all their mm-hmm. like senior designers. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, and I kind of got kind of I felt kind of like oh, crap. You know, right. Like four creative directors and it's just me and mm-hmm. I'm in a room. Yeah. Now you're starting to sweat. Yeah. Right. But see, the more you do that, the better you get at it. So it might be. 10 interviews before you actually get the gig because by the time you get to the 11th interview to the 11th job to the 11th company you're more relaxed you're like yeah I keep going to jobs and they don't ever hire me so I'm just gonna be you know it, 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 just the more you do it the more you're in those situations you're better you're able to then act better and treat it better so that you come off differently and yeah. more experienced I think the larger the company mm-hmm. the more I get nervous I'm sorry go ahead yeah no and, and this goes right into where I was talking about the freelancing thing is that you need to align yourself with professionals who are already doing it right you need to be around people who are smart and handling things so that you don't you don't have to carry the weight of that meeting you're there kind of helping or just being there because you're there with a smart person in the room who's handling the meeting and you're just soaking it all in. You're recording everything, right. everything. And then when you go home at night, you're just thinking about it the whole time. Like, dang, she ruled over that room. She told them how much and she didn't blink. She stared at him right in the face. And they said, sure. And they wrote her a check. And you got to just feel that energy and, 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 and remember it every time you needed to go do some kind of business act like that. But you need to be around other people. Yes, sir. I had a question about as far as I know with the pricing and the education and the portfolio, but how much of the experience plays a part in that? You know, and sometimes artists, sometimes you know, we can say, Well, I want this, mm-hmm. but the reality of Right, okay, so here's the starting point to any project. The basic cost. Right? So you walk down here, this is a beautiful store, I love Sand Flags, they're always been supportive. Um, but but they still gonna say, Damn, that canvas is fifty bucks. Right? They ain't gonna let me walk out of it for free. So now you got to put the price of the canvas, the paints, the brushes. That man who earlier was here talking to us about that local for saying now he was uh, picking out brushes. They're 25 cents, but when you take 10 of them, that's $2.50. That's money, cash out your pocket. So you always start with what are the costs of these things. That's why dentists charge what they charge because they have tons of equipment that's worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Plus they have med- uh, uh, medical school loans that's still paying back and whatever, right? So you gotta look at your art the same way. So you got a computer here, you got a laptop there, you need equipment, well, that's already putting you at a different price. Now you have rent to pay, well, you have a lifestyle to live, well, you know that you gotta earn. So so if you need $3,000 a month, and that's 28 days, let's say make it 30 just to make it the math easy, that means you need uh, 3000 uh, 3, a month, uh, 30, so that means you need, uh, dang it, I can't make that. Thirty thousand. That means ten dollars. No, ten dollars a day. That's that's not right. Is it, uh, 30, said three thousand a month. Oh. Divided by thirty. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a day, right? 100 you 100 need to make a hundred dollars a day. So, so a hundred dollars a day. That's ten, twelve bucks an hour. That's how much you need to make, and that's your goal. A uh, hundred dollars. So, if this gig they talking to you about, this logo, you know it's gonna take you five days. That's five hundred bucks. At the very minimum, you need that. You know, it's not counting, you know, the pencils, the markers, you know, if they want it on the canvas, if the computer that you're renting, you know, because Microsoft rents computers now um, uh, for businesses and stuff like that. You know, it's not counting all those things. And if you still have your badge to get it to SCAD, you need to go use their computer. <laughs> yes. All right? You know, um, um, so so th- that's, how, that's your starting point. Now you're not experienced, you know, um, maybe um, it takes you more than five days. Maybe um, um, your uh, the level of quality of your work it still needs more time. Well, then you know, okay, then instead of, instead of a hundred and three thousand, and if I live with mom, you know, and my rent bills are less, so I can get away with earning fifty dollars that day. Okay, the five days to fifty, the low is to fifty. But then you gotta really squeeze in that time because when I tell I charge a price for a project, I know I only have this much time to do it. Because the more time I take, the less I'm earning per hour now. The less and less and less. Now it's like, dang, this really wasn't worth my time. No, I need, if, I, if I charge a price, I know how long it's going to take me. I need to knock it out in that time. I may wait till the night before, but I'm going to knock that out. By that time, it's done. And 
and not the way. So I will start with that. Start with the basics. You know, what do you need to earn? Uh, and, you, and it's crazy um, math because you're not, just because you work those five days at $100 a day doesn't mean you're going to make 3000 that month because not every day you're earning that. So it's, it's okay. But at least while you're focused on working on those things, you're going to earn that. But um, that's to finish your answer. And you can uh, follow that up if I got it, if I didn't answer it right. But at the same time, the, when you're working on yourself and your own career, half the time is spent doing the artwork. The other half is chasing down leads, talking to people, answering emails, phone calls, meetings, and that's why when I get when I get an email from a person who says they want artwork, I tell them how much I charge uh, or what's it going to cost for that project. And if they don't give me enough info, I say, well, I need to know more information on this project. What do you need? What's it going to be for? And what's your budget? So that way, I get that out the way. If they don't like my price and they don't want to pay me my price, okay, cool. Well, have a good day. May your project be fruitful and, and uh, successful. I'll see you later. But sometimes you run into people that say, well, you know, your, your work, you're, you're not like out there like that. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, yeah. they kind of say things like that where, right. where you're saying, well, you don't have enough logos or I don't see enough of mm -hmm. samples of right. this. And what do you have to say to something like that? Like, you I have to, I, What I say is, well, why'd you call me? That's cool, you're right, you're right. I only done five logos in all my life. No, it's only five that you see on the website. Mm -hmm. But sure, sure, sure. I don't have the track record you're looking for, but why did you call me? You know, what happened to the last person you talked to? Gotcha. You know, so then they start telling you, well, I called you because so-and-so told me about you, and then I, you did a logo for my friend. So that's, oh, we're great. So then you heard good things about me. Okay. So I should be worth it. Gotcha. And if after that, they still don't feel it, hello, come on in. And after that, then it's like, that's not your customer anyway. You should not have to try to sell yourself. Now, if you're out there doing cold calls and say, hey, uh, crusty piece of crap, crusty crap pizza, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it looks a little crazy. I got some ideas for it. Yeah. You know, now, you, now you're trying to sell it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and then by then, I would check out how many locations they have, you know, if it's a, how, long, how long they've been in business, do they have funding, you know, do they have revenue. So then I can say, look, for five thousand dollars, I can offer you three different looks that will that will hit your market, that will talk to your customer, that will identify with the age group of eighteen to twenty-five who eat lots of pizza, blah blah blah. Right now you're coming in with some strategy, and now you're selling it. Bam! This is going this is going to work for you. You know? Don't believe me? Look, let's try it out. All right? And uh, and so so then. That's when you try to sell it. But if they call you, they, they message you, like, well, you call me. You know? So, so if that, then I convince you, then why are you calling me? I don't know. That's my answer, right? And then check out uh, Chris Doe, The Future, on, um, on uh, YouTube. The Future, without the letter E at Got the it. end of future. <laughs> that dude breaks it down. He's been in business for 20 years, and he's rich. Like, he, in one of his videos, he was talking to somebody who actually makes lots of money doing PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> All right, PowerPoint presentations. This lady is in England and she gets paid thousands and thousands of dollars for PowerPoint presentations. And Crystal was talking to her like, like somebody does when that person makes more money than they do. All right, so Crystal was, an amazed, was amazed at her rate. I'm sure he makes more money because he has a big company, but per day type of rate thing. So he said to her that uh, it took him uh, a lot of work to get to get paid what he wants and he wanted to get paid $10,000 a day. And uh, he kept, every time somebody hit him up about a project, he would say $10,000, $10,000, $10,000 until somebody actually gained $10,000. And that's for one day of work. <laughs> yeah, so you wanna check him out because he breaks it down and he has lots of those situations where uh, somebody's looking at your work like, yeah, you shouldn't be, like, you shouldn't charge me that much. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And he has an answer for everything. We're like, okay, well, cool. But the thing is, we cannot act like we're desperate because then they feed, people feed off on that. And it's not that they're trying to be yeah. mean or bad. It's just that there's hardly any respect for art anyways. And um, uh, given an opportunity, sure, you'll, you'll walk away with a Ferrari for $100. <laughs> if the car salesman's desperate enough like you need to buy something today well I got a hundred bucks and the only car I want is that Ferrari right there so you want to sell I got a hundred bucks and, and the car's on like dang it I need to pay my bill okay okay 
You're like, what? <laughs> right? Right. That's, that's what we do. And we can't let that happen to us. We can't act like that. The more we hold on to this mindset of having value, the more we'll get the clients that are going to pay us, the more that we'll have less clients looking for the deal. Saying, but when, and, and, and instead of, and what we don't want is clients who say, Shamari, that's too much. We have somebody else, and one of your friends who charges less. We need to cut that part off. And I always say, no, I don't know any artists. Who, <laughs> and and I, they would hate me if I say you. I don't want to uh, uh, piss off my friend who's a designer, illustrator, because I'm sending them a cheap old client. No. So I would say, no. Nah. No, nah, you need to go through Fiber and 99 cents, 99 designs. You know, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and do that, which I don't like and recommend at all anyway. But because you, anyways, you'll get the work that you're paying for. And yeah, you can't get that from here. So it's a mindset. And we have to hold on hard. And if that means you stay at your job longer, man, do it, bro. Anybody who has a job and wants to be a, a full-time artist, illustrator, designer, or something, freelancer, needs to stay at their job long enough so that you have months of money backed up. It's a design job, so it doesn't... I mean, it's a low-level design job, but hey, it's still a design job. it pays job. your bills, right? Right. Right, that's it. You go home and there's food in the fridge, or you can and, go and to the Kroger and pay for some food. new, new sublimation printing techniques, so it's always cool. That's good, too, so you're learning on, while you're on the job. The yeah. thing is that you want to have a cushion, you know, and we, we need a time before you leave so that we can have you something lined up next month. There you because you don't want to have that time where there's gaps. There's an ebb and flow, and those gaps hurt. Yeah, I know. And, uh, and me and my wife are looking at each other sometimes. <laughs> Dang. But what we do is we make sure that, um, that when you have those high points, you got to handle lots of things that, will, that, that, that you're going to see when it goes on the low points. So that rent, the bills, all those things need to be paid up first. You know, the, the, a vacation, my plane ticket, that's paid for months ahead. Yeah, so that the day comes, cool, I ain't had no money, nobody paid me this month, that's okay. The plane ticket's paid for, I'm gonna stay at my mom's. She's gonna have food. I'll be all right. <laughs> 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 right, I'll be all right. Yeah. At least I get there. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a big, long question, man. Um, big, long answer. Um, because um, you have to have something of value. That's it. You need something of value. So, so if Krusty Krab Pizza was a real place, because it's not, right? No, no, no. Um, um, you're going to have to do a lot of research before you even make that call. Okay. You're going to have to go eat their pizza. You're going to have to go in and see their place. See if, you even, if they treat people right. Because you don't want to work with people who are... are crazy, insane, insensitive, racist, whatever, right? right? So you're gonna have to do a whole lot of research first. So there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, I, I'm not sure how uh, tax records go and financial disclosure stuff goes, but you might need to find out how much money they make. Because what your idea of a logo may be way out their price point. Yeah, if they're, if they're selling uh, five dollar pizzas, and that's the main thing. That dang, they gotta sell a lot of five dollar pizzas to pay you five hundred dollars. Yeah. And then they're they gonna say no. All I, right. I have another question. Yes, and sir. This is, like it's about networking. Like I, um, I'm going for Ferdinand from grad school. Who's now a professor? She's doing that. She's talking. She's running a conference, design mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. So she invited me. Did the abstract. It's more like I'm going to go to DePaul University, and it's going to be a lot of designers and artists there, and and, mm -hmm. and art professors. What would be the best way to like kind of help that? Because like the creative director for the Onion is going to be the one one is the main speaker. What's the best way to like use that to help get your career at a better rate, mm -hmm. at a better level? I'm gonna let uh, Alyssa answer part of this too. Uh, she a big pro, but. Uh, when you go to these opportunities or these places where there's lots of people, right? Number one is you need to be prepared. Okay. All right. So the work doesn't start when you walk in there. The work starts now. Okay. You need a portfolio that shows okay. what you're good at that you want to get paid for. Okay. All right. So that's that Behance or or Behance is free. 
So you don't right. even have to buy your own pro website if I you got, want I to, got right? My, I got Adobe's. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So, so that needs to be up to date. Right. It needs to have uh, case studies and show the value of what you bring to the to the any game. Okay. So that when you're there meeting people, saying, hey, how you doing? And I've done this. Um, I've, I've been to events where I'm the only designer illustrator there, and I'm handing out a card to everybody. Now it's just stickers. Say, hey, how you doing? I'm Dan. I meet everybody in that room. There'll be 100 people. At the end of the day, everybody knows me. Even if just because I said that, I said hello. How you doing? That's all. Um, so at the end of the day, they all heard you say, "Hey, how you doing?" Um, what is your name again, Carl? Hey, how you doing? I'm Carl. I do a graphic design, illustration for web and print. Here, have my card. I'd like to talk to you when you have time. Walk away. Say, 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 hey, nice, good, whatever their response may be. They might say, "I have time now." Okay, well, cool. What you gonna say now? Okay. Now you gotta have the next set. You know, I was like, cool, well, I work in print when I do, and I do um, uh, catalogs, brochures, you know, you've got to know what the, what the event is about, so that maybe if, if, they're, um, if they're hiring or if they're, uh, um, um, if they're children book illustrators or a book show, right. you know, whatever, you got to know all these things up front so that then you have a pitch that fits to who you're talking to. But if it's other designers, illustrators, it's it's art, it's graphic design professors, working designers, and illustrators. Cool. Then graphics. you say, then my pitch would be like, "Hey, I'm Carl. I'm a, I'm a uh, graphic designer for web and print, and I love to work with you." Okay. Okay. Uh, let me know when you have a moment. We'll talk. And then okay. the answer is like, "Sure, I have a moment right now, Carl. Let's talk." Okay. Great. Um, uh, I I like working in collaborative projects that are dealing with this, that, and the other. Um, I have my own machines. I, uh, I like working remotely by myself or with a group. Let me know what projects you got coming up because I'd like to show you some more things that are interested that may fit the projects that you're working on. And then they might say, cool, Carl, that sounds great. I'm working on a big old uh, uh, rebranding of Atlantic Station. Do you know how to do banners? Do you know how to do car wraps? Yes, those are, that's are my strengths. Those are my my forte. <laughs> they're my they're in my portfolio. And if not, I can say, I would like to send an email with some samples of that work. Okay. You know, bam, you're hitting them. You're okay. hitting them. And then then the majority of people can be like, hey, Carl, that's nice. Thank you for your card. And then they'll, they'll see you around. And they're like, cool. Well, let me know when you have time. That's going to be the majority. But if anybody says, Carl, tell me about you, you got to be ready. Right. And you have to have the 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 uh, link. To back it up because as soon as you walk away they're like who is this guy Carl he just gave me a card let me look at it oh snap Carl got skills wait hold Carl come back <laughs> know what I mean right. yeah so that's how you prepare that okay. um, um, and I'm gonna let uh, let's answer um, but I'm gonna tell the story I, um, I I go to hackathons all the time it's been a while since I've been but I used to go all the time and I would hand everybody my card and say hey I'm a designer I'm a designer I'm a designer and so at the end of the day, at the evening, everybody has seen me. And then there's times when there's announcements and like, oh, there's certain um, um, CEOs or certain people working on certain projects and they want to talk about it. And then I will get in line and I don't have a project. I'm Dan, I'm an illustrator and I would like to work with you. I gave everybody my car, you know my name. All right, talk to y'all later. Okay. That's it, man. But see, I'm an extrovert who likes to talk. Right, you know, and get in front of people. <clears throat> so you got to work on that part. Listen, you got some yeah. answer for that? You definitely should pull your strengths down. It is fantastic with socializing on the room. I don't think ever in my life have I ever hit Andrew one in a room. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to focus on smaller uh, amounts of people. Uh, that takes a lot of research, though, up front. So that means figuring out who's going to be at that event. Go to the Facebook event page or the whatever event page there is. If there's a showing of who's there, Figuring out what their strengths are, uh, where they're coming from, is it a company you may want to network with, and then really focusing on those people first. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So when you talk to them, like Dan mentioned before, making sure you've done your research, what is the company looking for? Can they afford to pay you? If you have to choose between the crusty pizza <laughs> and um, you know diamond stallion weenie designers, <laughs> mm-hmm. choose that company, the one that can pay you more over top of the uh, there's something to be said about making genuine relationships and just meeting people for the sake of meeting them. Uh, but when you're in a time of crunch and you really need to get work um, cycling through whatever your pipeline is for uh, making money, uh, then it's important to really focus your efforts. Um, I like to liken it to applying for a job, how 
when you apply, it can take a week to apply to one job because right. when you're putting your process together, this is all catered towards a certain vision. When Dan made that rap process, it wasn't because he enjoys making raps and this is his new gig. It's because he knew who he was talking to and he had to have a proof concept specifically for a person, uh, so he caters specifically to their needs. So now when you talk to people, having some idea of the kind of people you want to talk to will keep you from trying to go to every single event. Mm -hmm. uh, it will keep you focused on the type of event and the type of people that uh, want the type of project you do. That way your, uh, your portfolio won't be a scatter mm -hmm. of a projection, a painting, a sculpture, that kind of stuff. Uh, my biggest strategy when it comes to networking with people at events, especially since I can only do so many at a time, is to listen. Um, it's a kind of a, a listening that um, engages the person. So if you were to talk about your passion on football, that has nothing to do with my talents. When you start talking about football, I will nod my head, I'll keep going, oh yeah, I'll, I'll mention my um, whatever tidbits I might know about it, and I'll keep you going. So your, your positivity level gets higher and higher. And as you go, maybe at some point, fingers crossed, if you're a decent human being, you'll ask me something about me, and I'll mention what I do. And because you're up here, you're most likely to think that whatever I say is also up here. Uh, so this kind of psychology of matching people's frequencies, bringing them up, and then introducing whatever you want them to have a positive thought on. Yeah, okay. And I think what she said is uh, um, you have to uh, focus on who's going to be there. And find out who's going to be there and focus on those people that you're, that are going to match up to your skills. Okay. So if they got recruiters there, you need to know who recruiters are. When I've gone to hackathons, uh, I meet everybody, but I make sure I meet the sponsors. And I go say hello to the sponsors. I want them to sponsor me eventually. And they're already sponsoring. That's for my, for my sake, you know. Okay. The point is that when you see an event or a convention you're going to, find the people who fit the kind of jobs you need or the kind of clients you want or the kind of connections you're looking for so that then you identify them and when you show up you're looking for those people only to talk to them and you have a plan on how you're going to talk to them yeah that's real good i like that thank you cool all right so i think we covered what I, what i came to say any particular questions go ahead Alyssa. i do have a question dan how do you keep your energy up um, at these events because you are a master at hitting up every single person i've never been to <laughs> they know who you are. They uh -huh. have some sort of branding for you. How are you, um, I guess, behind the scenes, able to keep your energy up and yeah. stay so upbeat when you go to events? Lots of coffee. Um, uh, no, you know, I have no idea. I grew up this way. Uh, my mother is, uh, she was um, a big salesperson. She sold Avon, Tupperware, vitamins, all kinds of stuff. And uh, even to this day, she old and um, um, and small and living in a, but she knows everybody in her building um, uh, at church she knows everybody still she likes she, she does not my mother does not leave church from her seat to the front door she leaves she leaves her seat and walks through the whole church to talk to everybody and then she walks out the front door and so I'm that same kind of person I have that personality where I like talking to people I like seeing stuff saying stuff I want to know what you're doing. I'm on the I'm on the bus. I haven't been in the bus in a long time, but I, I'll see a person with a big old portfolio. It's like oh, I know there's artwork in there, and I say, Hey, what you got going on? You know, and that person don't know. Like, who are you? Hey, I'm an artist, and I noticed you got a portfolio. What you working on? And, uh, and that's just the kind of person that I am. I have trained because of uh, the tattoos. Because when I started doing my tattoo career, I had to get used to taking over. Um, 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 the process when the person walks through the door because the person will walk in through the door talk to you about a tattoo they want and then leave and not get the tattoo and you spend two hours talking to them working on a drawing so I had to so I had to control that process otherwise I'm just wasting my day all day so as soon as they walk through the door I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm greeting them saying hey how you doing I'm grabbing their attention I'm getting them to start telling me about the ideas they want so I can get to a price right away so that they can say yes or no I can lock him in for the appointment, deposit, something. And so that took a lot of practice, constantly, constantly. And I used to be a very flirtatious person. And, um, and so I would always bring that in into the play somehow. 
get that person feeling calm and relaxed and liking me. They have to like me. I want them to like me so that whatever price I said, they say yes. And uh, and then and they get the tattoo and then they go, get out. I need the I need the next victim. <laughs> and so and so that kind of been the practice for me. So that uh, and so and I I um I know lots of educators and people who are very smart, but they're very drab and calm in how they talk. And after a while, you're like, dang. <laughs> Can you get to the point? You know, it's like the stuff you're saying is awesome, but. The way you're saying it is just people putting people to sleep. So I do a lot of, I teach a lot of kids. I do a lot of art classes for kids, and I need to keep their attention span on me. And so I come live. I start off live. I'm, I'm, I'm on. I turn the switch on, and I gotta be eight. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Come on in. How are you doing today? What are you working on? And and then people catch on, and you're talking about that level. Yes, I come in on that level, and then people just kind of get hyped up with me, and now we're all hyped. And now we're having fun. And we're learning at the same time. Does that answer your question? I have one more question. On yes. That question. Mm -hmm. What is the, just in your opinion, um, a tip for making that transition between somebody who's talking to you about a concept that they want done to somebody who is now locked in? Like, you know that just socially, by the situation, mm -hmm. they have agreed. This is a yes. Uh huh. So how do I go from yeah, one so, to the other? Yeah, so a lot of people will come up to you and say, oh yeah, I have this idea, I want to do this. Yeah, you seem great. Yeah, we should talk more. And then, like you said, you never hear from them again. Right. What's your uh, go-to technique or okay. technique series got you. to get them to jump from, you have it, we've talked about it, to now we both kind of feel that you said yes. Right. Um, so get to the money. Get to the money conversation. Um, uh, so, so here's when I introduce myself, I talk about money, it's, it's, but I'm not really saying money. So I would say, how you doing? I'm Dan. I'm an artist illustrator. Uh, I work on um, uh, mobile games and comics. I get paid to draw. That's it. Like no matter what I say, what room I do, graphic design for web and print, and uh, and I build websites for artists. Um, um, somewhere in there, I always say at the end, I get paid to draw. That way, when they start talking to me, I've already said I get paid. So when you're starting to talk to me, it's because you know that if you want me to do the work for you, you gotta pay me. So, so they're like, oh great, you do comics, yeah. Yeah, so listen, I have this idea, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, great, that's awesome. And so five minutes in, I'm like, look, look, look. Here's what we need to start with. I already tell them where we're gonna go. So, that, so first we need to establish the character concepts. We need to work on, um, on the character development. We need some thumbnails for this comic book, and then we actually work on the comic. Do you have an editor? All right, so this is what it's gonna cost you. Now, I start talking about how much it's gonna cost. But this all happens um, real, so, um, this happens, I wanna say 10 minutes in, it, but it has to be really fast. I cannot let the person tell me their project idea for two hours, because now they wasted two hours of my time when they realize they gotta pay me. <clears throat> Just because you say freelancer, the word free is in it, and next thing you know, they think they, you're gonna get something for free. So as soon as I start talking money, I see their face. And their face will tell me whether or not it's something they're gonna follow up on. And as soon as I see their face start doing math and figuring out how they're gonna live their life and get this project on, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, cool. So then I, I cut that, I make that smaller. I don't go deep into, into, into details. I was like, you're cool, cool. Well, the way to, you're gonna get your animation project on TV is if we could do this, 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 and this, and this is gonna cost you. And because I have a little experience in being an animation project, I say, you need $30,000 to get started. But that's only, it's, it, that's the, what it costs, because we're gonna have ten, a crew of 10 uh, animators, illustrators working together, and that's what it costs. And they're like, okay, cool, well, I get with you when that happens, all right. And in the meantime, we can still talk and hang out, but then I'm gonna move on to the next person. But yeah, it's usually kind of, I, I, let, I ask questions and let them tell me things, and then I say, well, you know what that's gonna cost? And then I start talking about money. Mm. And then they're like, well, what can you do to help us, Dan? I can do this part. Then I'm about to call Alyssa, I'm about to call so-and-so. And, -so. and, uh, and now, but now you need to have a budget. So mm. as soon as you have that budget, let me know, we can talk about it. I got the money now, I'm rich. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> Forget this event. Let's get out of here. <laughs> let's, let's go find us an office. We're going to walk into an empty building. We're going to walk into first to Microsoft, buy all the computers, 
and then when I can find us a building and put the computers in, and I'll find you the artist. And that's that. Uh, that's my uh, my um, ideal conversation. So you didn't take a long time seeing all that finance stuff. It means you're very familiar with the rates and yes. how much products will add to the as you're speaking. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with my rates. Yeah, and I mentioned this before. Um, you got to know how much it costs for you to live. What's your rate? Now, let's say you have a job. What, what do you get paid at your job right now? $12 an hour. $12 an hour. Okay, cool. That's your rate right now. All right? So somebody says, Carl, I need you for three days, nonstop, to work on an animation project, and I'm going to pay you 12 bucks an hour. Your answer is going to be yes. Maybe, maybe they say, I, I, I can keep you busy for the next six weeks, next six months. Your answer is going to be yes. That's you don't want to quit your job and then for only two weeks. That, that was for only problem. two weeks, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But you get, but 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 if they're gonna pay you twelve bucks, but you already get paid right now doing some job that you kinda like to something that you really love, cool. Then my answer, if I was Carl, I'd be like, cool, but can can I look ask for a raise, you know, in, in three weeks, in six weeks, whatever. Then then they might be say, Cool, Carl, I'll raise you up if you if you are rolling with it the way you need to. So that's how you start figuring out what your rate is. Okay. All right? First how much you get paid at your regular job? If you get paid twenty five dollars an hour at working at a Home Depot, and then you're offered an animation job that pays you fifteen dollars an hour, you're like, Oof, I got, <laughs> I got to really want to work on Krusty Krab and, and um, you know cartoon. I got to really want it. What, you know that you might mean? be a stepping stone to then get that Disney job. You know that could be, but you got to think about your rate. And what what your if your rate is. has dropped? Because like I before this job. I'm done I'm sorry. We're gonna get no, to you. I didn't, finish I didn't, finish I didn't up. It. No, finish up the question because we gotta talk about the, what the rate. Your, what if your rate is dropping? Like, what like I have worked at companies where I made twenty five dollars an hour, but now I'm making twelve dollars an hour. Do you go with the older rate? Or do you go with your current rate? Well, depending on who you're talking to, now you gotta know your customer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and you gotta know what the market is for for that company, what they what they pay. Right. You know, because you might be asking for thirty dollars, but that company is known for squeezing the life out of artists, and they ain't gonna go over twelve. No, I don't so, think so the only way you're gonna get that job is if you say twelve. But if there's a chance, and you kind of talk to other people in the industry, and you met somebody who works at that company, and like, hey man, how much did they pay? Because I ain't even going to the interview if the part, my friend who works at that company says, man, they don't pay nothing here. Then I ain't going. I ain't doing no interview. You know, so you got to do a little research. It all starts with research. And that's why Alyssa asked if I know how much I need to get paid. Do like, yeah, because I've researched not only through experience, but because I ask questions. Do you, like, use the AIGA uh, book about rate? Or do you do I, I have not used it in a long time because I know what I'm worth. Gotcha. Yeah, but, but in the beginning, yeah, I used it as a, as a starting point. Okay. But talk to other people. Talk to others. This is a guy who, who, who does animation and works in comics. Alyssa, uh, y'all don't know her. Who knows her? Raise your hand. One, two people, three. All right. <laughs> All right. She's won an Emmy. She's worked in seasons and seasons of Archer. She has experience as an animator. And she's here right now. Right? Uh, yeah. So so coming out to places is, is a way to find people who are already in the industry. And as soon as you know about that, that's why in the beginning you weren't here when we introduced ourselves. And that's why it's important to know who's in the room so that then... You're like, you know, I've been thinking about this and there's these job openings. Wait a minute, there's two people here I can ask these questions and then they can say yes, no, or hey, don't worry about that. I, I just heard about this other gig. Let me see your work. And I then you pull up and then you pull up I your portfolio. For, you got a project at a, a comic convention, get one day animation project I was there. Okay, there you go, see? So those are the, the things about uh, the work that comes before the actual negotiation, before you actually present yourself, say, hey, I, I need a job. And you don't say that. You don't ever say, I need a job. You always say, hey, I'm the, I'm the person for that gig right there you got going on. Yeah. That, I'm the person that goes in the middle of that pipeline right here. You don't ever say, anybody want to buy art? And then get the hell out of it. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. All right, you had a question. Go ahead. Uh, so I was going to ask about um, your uh, like skill sets and stuff like that. So I know okay, there's so much who like trying to build our skills entirely. What's the best way to actually go about doing that? see some of my stuff, it went from, okay, I see that you're improving, to, okay, you're improving a lot more, but you want to keep improving your stuff so that you can be, um, become marketable when somebody sees stuff like, okay, I, I like, 
like your stuff. Oh, six months ago, your stuff was not that great, but six months now, yeah, I like your stuff because it improved mm-hmm. so much. So what's the best way like about um, trying to improve those skills? There's two questions, and there are two themes in this question. One is you said marketable. So it's up to you to determine what market, right? You gotta figure out what kind of job you want, what gig, right? So, so if it's animation, then you need to learn some part of the animation process, right? If it's uh, comics, you need to learn how to do storytelling or something. Something that relates to that market, right? So number one. Number two is your talent level. How do you improve on it by constantly drawing all the time? And, you know, maybe it's an unpopular opinion. I draw all the time, every day. Every day. And it's not because I think that um, 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 that's the only way to succeed. It's because I'm addicted, right? This is the thing I love to do. I'm addicted to drawing. I literally am. When I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm uh, upset, all those things, I, I, drawing brings me back. So, because I like to draw, I, my our drawing has improved greatly from 20 years ago, from 10 years ago, from five years ago. So that in itself puts me in a whole different market from somebody who doesn't draw every day. That puts me in a different market from somebody who's been out of school for years and has not improved on their portfolio. And it puts me in a different place, market-wise, market, market wise, from uh, when, uh, when po- potential clients see me cranking out stuff all the time. And that, that uh, our beats and lyrics thing, that's say 30 hours, and I knocked it out in three days. Like, I put in the time on that. So they know that, you know, if we give this down today, we'll have it next week, because he said so. And I can see his work that he's doing that. So that's kind of my answer. Awesome. Anything you like to add? Alyssa? No, you good? No. Okay, okay. Jump in if you need time. Go ahead. Also, what if um, so like that's a problem like they had that block that you decided to show up and like make it harder for them to draw. You know the artist block they gotta mm-hmm. go through that thing. Like I like to draw but yeah. I, it's kinda hard to do this stuff like that. Well okay, so then there's a there's techniques that you need to figure out how they work for you to get into that mode. And that's called um not habits. I think it's habits. There's something that there's a you have to figure out what are the steps that are going to get you into that creative mode. And there's a word for it I can't remember right now. Um, uh, so just like a car, right? You don't, jump, you, don't, you don't jump out into the highway and skip or jump into a car and now you're driving a car down the highway. That's impossible. Unless you're a, tra- a professional like myself who draws all the time and it's like I can start working immediately in a professional level right away. Some of the artists call it warm up, right? You warm up and start sketching, right? right? But just like a car, it's like first, you need a car and a key to crank up the car. So you sit down in the car, crank it up, put it in drive, put your seatbelt on, pull out the street, and then you're in the highway later on. So you need to have a list of processes that get you to that creative mode uh, um, every time. So to me, I turn on Judge Judy, or I put on The Future, YouTube, or I put on The Matrix, Training Day, Scarface, something, right? I crank up some music. Right, I get my coffee cup. Of course, I have a home office. You know, I crank up my computers. You know, sit down. And then my guts, my grandson now lives with us, so he's running around. And also, I have my little process. Like, look, I'm about to sit down, and for five hours, I'm cranking out something. I have my to-do list. You know, this is what I need to work work on. I got my notes from the conversations of this to-do list thing that I need to do. You know, I get into my mode, start thinking about it. Okay, cool. For the last five days, I've been thinking about this logo. I was gonna do it, and now I figured it out. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to start sketching. Now I'm gonna sketch some stuff. Maybe I need to draw a skull first, because I like drawing skulls. I need to draw the stuff that I like first. Now that I got into the drawing mode, now I can start sketching the stuff that I got paid to do. Right? So it's the steps. You know, and eventually you do it so much that you have your list of steps. When I do murals. I start the drawing on, on, uh, digitally first. Then I started painting to get my brush, my brush hand back on, back in. Then days later I do the actual mural, and now I warm myself up to that point. So find the things that warm you up, man. Cause and if you're having a block, I don't, I never had those. Um, uh, Cause I'm crazy creative. I got books and sketchbooks and Evernote full of notes of stuff that I want to do. That if I had five arms. I could do it at one time, um, uh, but but if you get into those uh, blocks, man, you need to turn on some cartoons, 
some movies, something that got you inspired to be an artist in the first place. What was that thing that when you were three years old, you're like, you know what, I want to draw that. Turn that up. It's on YouTube somewhere, on Netflix somewhere. Turn it on. Get yourself back in that, gro in that mode. Like, dang, I remember watching this when I was a kid. That's why I ain't stopped drawing since. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. I get education. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta get into your mode. Anybody else? No. We good. Anything you like? Anything anybody like to add? Anything you feel? I mean, I don't know. I mean, and I don't know about you, but like when I when I get like a block, I like to start sketching anything. Like I'll start sketching circles or squares or just simple shapes, trying to get get. Like it's like exercise, mm -hmm. and like you know, like you wanna you wanna do lift those heavy weights. You might do like little stretches first, and so you kind of do the stretches you first. Get that blood flowing. Get the, do yeah. the basic shapes, and then and everything that you draw, it starts out with basic shapes. Yeah. If, you, if I drew her, there'd be a circle, there'd be kind of an old fur body, and in glasses, and like a little hips, because she's a woman, so you have to make the hips bigger. And just kind of do the basic just shapes, start, yeah. and get and keep it mm -hmm. keep going in the flow. Before you know it, you've drawn her in a battle bikini killing a dragon. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, when you're a professional, you know what your um uh, what gets you out of artist block quick? That check. <laughs> Money. Yeah. Money. That's why it's on there. That's why it says right there. Yeah. You need to get your pay rate. If they if they pay you your rate that you deserve, you'll be motivated and you're funded. So you you do need to knock that out. Right, right. Yeah, they're like they owe me fifteen hundred dollars right now. I need to finish this. I ain't going nowhere because because as soon as I finish this and send them a screenshot, they paying me fifteen hundred bucks. Right, right. Man, I I'm, I'm you you gotta do it to yourself. I'm All right, sorry. last thing. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Man. No, go ahead, man. I just something I something I learned uh, in school. It is stupid, but whatever. The way to get better is draw off your like non dominant hand because it forces you to think about how to draw. And force you how to like think about the process of where you're putting your objects, how you're creating your objects. And so when you go back to your dominant hand, you know, you, you kind of like you kind of know the shapes, you know what I mean? And so like a like a professor is like, okay, I want you guys, you know, like I like my first semester in grad school, like I want everybody to draw with your non-dominant hand like 30 drawings. And so you're just drawing, 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 drawing. Mm -hmm. And, and you, that forces you to think about how to draw and the process of drawing. That's a challenge. You're challenging yourself. You need to challenge yourself. That's it. That's Sorry. It. That's good. That's good. Cool. All right. Any last questions or any last comments, anyone? I have one last comment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving your time to the community and, you know, giving this knowledge away so freely because yeah. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. when I was doing it, so many people will tell you the fluff story. Mm-hmm. No. And you were definitely not a fluffer. And thank you. thank you for being so genuine and donating your weekends, your weekdays, your free time to, to the community. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Cool. I need to talk to you. I, I, All right, let's talk. Whoever needs to talk to me, Artist King underscore ATL. We're on Instagram <coughs> and Twitter. Uh, Artistking.org uh, forward slash is uh, um, events for more upcoming events and meetups. And then uh, Alyssa here is uh, with My Animation Life. Check her out. She has events also. Um, um, stay up to date so that we can keep on growing. And then those cheap clients have nowhere to go <laughs> but to, to the bank and give us our money. Yeah. Right? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good. I need yeah. to. I need All right. Let's, uh, let's sit down. I'm going to talk to Shamari first. And then I'll talk to you.